your eyes for a minute Close your eyes for a second I won't change my mind Hello Posh Farm, welcome back to my channel Posh Cat Eyes Unfiltered Thank you so much to my latest subscribers. Thank you for joining us. And for my existing, thank you for keeping it locked in here. Always, always share this channel with your friend, like, comment, and subscribe. Let's get into the talking point that was episode four of Married at First Sight. I know, I know, I am so far behind, but I'm gonna try and play catch up. Now, episode four brings us another match that is misfit by the experts of course we're going to also touch base with the honeymooners that's the newly wedded who are away across the pond for their honeymoon we'll get there for but i would like to discuss or highlight the talking point that was this matchup for episode four we meet early 32 year old registered nurse who is just recovering from a heartbreak that you would describe as devastating she was weeks away from her prenupticals until her partner or her fiance broke the news to her that he is no longer in love and i get pro proceeded to move on to a new love and got the new love pregnant whilst this is heartbreaking i guess we can see the desperation that has stemmed from this heartbreak for ellie now ellie is being matched up with some guy called ben ben is 39 year old a tall guy who has never been married no kids apparently he's here looking for love that is his take guys now i am not sure what this particular matchup is like ellie seems like a very nice kind homely lady why is she a married at first sight Guys, I can't answer this question. I am so done with this contestant thinking that Married at First Sight is their last bus stop for happy ending. Absolutely not, guys. Please, learn from your predecessors. Nothing good comes out of this show. Well, it's off to the wedding day and it's a beachfront. Beautiful scenery, beautiful setup. The flowers are amazing. In walks Ben, who seems, you know, easy on the eyes. You know, I'm not sure, but there is always that one voice of reasoning and this is jordan jordan is ellie's cousin and he is here to assess what the experts have offered to her cousin and he did i think guys jordan i'm making this call jordan should be an fbi he is so good at what he does spotting the bs and the red flags <laughs> he's so good well anyways these two were paired up together Ellie couldn't stop laughing. I don't know if she was nervous or just giddy. It was just too much for me. The wedding concluded with the two sharing a smooth patch and it was off straight away to the reception and this is where things went left. Very quickly, you could see Jordan just scoping the prey. <laughs> Predator, right? Is it prey, prey, which one? Whichever you look at it. And no sooner had they had a few bites to eat, Jordan went in with a question, why are you here? In front of everyone, he didn't even pull him aside, just like, what are you here? What do you do for a living? To which Ben answered, I am a tour guide and I also have a podcast. And you know, and he, he went on, how many followers or subscribers do you have? He's like, oh, quite a few. You know, the funny thing is, Ben's responses and attitude was very nonchalant. You could see like he didn't even care he wasn't he couldn't be bothered he could not be bothered he made a few digs at jordan and to his friends that didn't really sit well with me but like i said ellie was busy laughing up her nervousness or laughing off at the excitement that she has finally gotten a ring on her finger she didn't really care who it was coming from she just wanted to be known as a married woman and this is where i felt it was kind of desperate for her and quite sad it didn't take long before jordan pulled ben aside to question him further and ben was quite open and happy to reveal all his intentions he's been trying to get on right at first sight forever now he says he's here for love but for you to be trying on successfully a few attempts to come on a show to find love don't you think you should probably give the real world a second try oh he's a traveler he travels a lot 
and guys i didn't even know that tour guides are they make the best whores i don't know like this was coming from one of the friends of ellie i didn't know this like how would i know but it pretty much matched the job description because you're pretty much trying to sell yourself <laughs> including your body to your clients right i don't know guys this is what they said it's not coming from me but this is news to me breaking news right well ben let it all out i don't know if i'm here for love if love comes across as an extra bonus bingo so we all know he is here to promote himself and his business as well as his upcoming or newly acquired podcast and jordan just saw through his bs kept on digging the guy kept on ben was so happy to just fall into the hole that jordan was digging it was quite amusing to see this guy just be honest i don't know if he had the truthful drugs medaz and he was just filled with all of the mouth diarrhea that was just coming out and he just producers couldn't like what what is going on like you hear for generations like uh, i don't know maybe whatever wow Ellie, good luck with this. We're going to see these two later on when they go away to uh, enjoy their newlywed status in their honeymoon. And now let's catch base with the honeymooners, those newlyweds who have gone on their honeymoon. Sarah and Sarah and Tim seems to be back on track. They are enjoying each other's company. And we also see Cassandra and Tristan having the best time. Tristan is also very nervous thinking about how he's going to lock lips with his bride for the first time and we see him trying to ask or seek permission before he could do that oh nice guy they always finish last i don't know but i'm calling it and then we move on to lucinda and the tin man this is quite heartbreaking if i would say by the way eden and jordan are seemingly trying to recreate their wedding day and all seems good eden has successfully opened up her walls shared her heartbreak or her devastating heartbreak to which Jaden sympathizes or empathized and shared the same sentiment to which they are looking at a bright future in living honestly together let's see what happens when they join the group because that is where things take shape again i'll go back to lucinda and mr tin man they were sort of having an oyster orgasmic rubbish action which i'm like what is this like is this what the, the show is trying to do promote or promote what is not i really don't know there is no sexual chemistry between these two and you could actually see that but it got confirmed when the honeymoon box was presented before them the questions that was asked was do you find me attractive are you sexually attracted to me lucinda is literally all over there 100 percent in like or in love or in her feelings for tin man Whereas Tim Man is the opposite. Tim Man has got no feelings. He is constantly bringing back his trauma. I'm alone in the world. And because of that, I'm going to be a hard ass. That you're 51 and single, never been married for a reason. Red flag, in my opinion. See that age, 51, never been married, nothing. And you come on here and tell me the world is against you. Mate, I will be running the other way away from you. Because there's something majorly wrong with you. That's my opinion. He broke it down straight to her. I'm not attracted to you. And uh, it's not just there or there yet. I don't know when it will be there, but he is projecting slow burning stage. And this also takes us to Jack and Tori. Again, Tori was oblivious to Jack's feeling for her. She thought Jack was way over the moons in like or in his feelings for her until the honeymoon box was placed. And the question then, you know, what turns you on? You know, what do you like about me? First impression and all of that, yada, yada, yada. And then it came, to, it came on to the particular question of, do you find me sexually attractive? Of course, Tori is sexually attracted to Jack, but Jack is not sexually attracted to Tori. This was news for Tori because she felt she was, you know, the best thing since sliced bread. But Jack sort of broke it down to her. I feel what Jack is trying to do is drop, cut this girl down to size 
and make her feel less of herself so he can dominate her because again the thing between these two is control freak and that is taking shape i feel really sad but this is where we're going to end it guys i'll come on here and talk more about the last matchup for this season if that is a step we've got into that's coming in until then guys thank you so much for watching i will touch base very soon stay safe and remain focused Bye.